to our credit chat, which we host every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Our credit chats cover a wide range of financial topics. And today we're going to talk about ways to reduce waste and save on your grocery bills. Uh, we have an awesome panel with us today. We have Stephen Annette Economides, New York Times bestselling authors and founders of the MoneySmartFamily.com. And we have this awesome book, which definitely inspired this chat here. This is by Stephen Annette Economides. And we also have uh, Rod Griffin, Experience Director of Public Education, here with us today. How are you all doing? Great. You're no, doing truly. Good. Marvelous. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, somebody on Periscope is telling me to speak slowly, so I will try to speak a bit more slowly. Guys, I'm so happy to have you here because I love all of the tips that you share about ways to reduce um, your bills. And I know you guys call yourself America's cheapest family. And so I know you guys are going to have some really amazing tips to share here with us today. Um, so I kind of want to go ahead and just jump right into it and ask you the first question that we've already tweeted out, which is what are some common mistakes people make when it comes to buying groceries? Okay, there's several that we jotted down as we were looking through some of these questions to be prepared for the interview today. Um, the first thing is to go to the grocery store and not have a plan. That's a huge mistake. Um, if you go to the grocery store without a plan, there have been studies done that say 60% of the items that you put in your cart will be impulse items. Wow. So you go, yeah, think about that. If you go in for four items, you're going to put 10 in your cart. Is that right? 60%? 10, 10 and 6. If you go in for 10, you'll put 16 in your cart. Okay. That's well, easier math. All right, whatever. I but keep the point it easy is, for me, that's for sure. <laughs> See, there's, there's kind of a rule in finances that says money flows to those who have a plan. And mm. the, more you, the more money flows to you. Well, if you shop at the grocery store and you know that they have a marketing plan and their plan is to separate you from your money by getting you to, to buy highly processed, highly profitable items that they put at eye level, then and you go in without a plan, then their plan is going to trump yours. Right. If you go in with a plan saying, I've only got this much money to spend, these are the items I'm going to buy, these are the sale items I want, then your plan will win. So having a plan is definitely the most important thing to do when you go into a grocery store. Right, and along with that impulse, the whole impulse yeah. thing is if you don't have a plan and then on top of that you don't have a list, that's a double whammy. So mm -hmm. you need to go into the grocery store as if you're hunting and have, have an actual intentional um, idea of why you're there rather than just going in because you feel like food. Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So no plan and no list. Those are the, the major fails when it comes to grocery shopping. And um, some uh, other people here are echoing their remarks. And Babe Roll definitely retweeted or messaged out, money flows to those who have a plan. So that is such a great quote. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. The wise one here says, my wife doesn't follow a list. So that's definitely um, a problem. Stop blaming the wife. You can help her make a list. <laughs> no. There you go. That is a great tip. Christina, there's oh, another meme yeah. out there um, that says the less you shop, the more you save. So if the average person is going to the grocery store two to three times a week without a plan, then if they can knock that down to once a week and just plan out their dinner menus for the week, they could literally cut their grocery bill in half with just that one strategy. Wow. Let's, let's frame this for a second because we kind of started, we jumped right in with both feet, but groceries is one of the major expenses for a family. Average families are spending about 13% of their take home pay on, on food. Okay. Now we have a, a figure we use and it's, it's kind of a rough one, but it's $200 per person per month is the average that people are spending. So if you have four people in your family, you're spending $800 a month. That's $9,600 a year, almost the price of a decent used car. And nobody would go out and shop for a used car on an impulse. Well, some people do. But, but they're not the smart ones, not the ones who are watching credit chat right now. They're, they're not going to go do that. But we're talking about a major expense. And so what we're going to cover in this next hour are things that can really cut that price down. And if you could cut that grocery bill in half, you're talking about almost 
$4,000 in savings. And it's not by clipping coupons. So there's really a lot at stake. And that, and that kind of money could either provide for debt liquidation, retirement investing, mm -hmm. or a nice vacation this year. So it's definitely well worth everybody's time to keep listening and to learn all you can about groceries and to consider purchasing the book, right? Yes. The, you got the book too. Yeah. <laughs> And you know, uh, that's that's what's so interesting when we come up with these topics for these chats and people were like, well, you're a, you're a credit bureau. What does this have to do with credit? It has everything to do with credit because when you cut yeah. costs on these basic items that you spend money on every single week, then you have more money to put toward debt. Like you said, you have more money to save and that will ultimately help your credit. So it all ties in. Maybe it's not exactly every week. How does this benefit my credit? But it, it really does. We try to find those basic everyday things that people do and give them ways that they can save money to help them improve their financial situation. Right. Honestly, agree. the shopping for groceries is one of the fastest ways to turn a personal, personal finance situation around, mostly because there's a lot of money at stake. There's easy habits to change, but also because you're doing it every week. You know, if you're trying to recover by changing how you, your, your auto insurance, well, that's a once a month payment, but groceries is every week. And that is a great way to turn your financial situation around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great tip. Great point. So now you, you were talking about creating a plan. So what are some of the best practices for creating a plan and a budget when it comes to grocery shopping? Okay, well, a budget is a plan for your money. And so we, we have a book, our first book, um, America's Cheapest Family Gets You Right on the Money, talks about how to set up a realistic budget. And a realistic budget isn't a done in January thing, you know, a list, a spreadsheet or whatever, and then forgotten. This uh, way we budget is we spend about four hours a month managing our money and making sure we've got it set up to go where we want it to go. So in the area of groceries, what we're talking about is set a, start with a guesstimate. $800 a month on groceries, that's fine. I, I don't care what you're spending. As a matter of fact, you know, what we really want to do is not spend more than you make, but, but start with a guesstimate. And what we recommend to people who are kind of newbies at budgeting or just trying to get a hold of this is take that money in cash. Now, mm -hmm. I wouldn't take dollars to the store. I would take maybe half of that and try going shopping for, for just for, a week's for worth, a week's really, worth. So maybe even a 200 to $300 and see if you can stay within that limit. And after a month's worth of doing that, you're going to have a very solid idea of what you're spending on groceries. And that becomes your grocery budget. Now, we can't go into a lot of details about the situation, but we're coaching a family right now. And they originally guesstimated that they were spending about $800 on groceries a month. And now that we've been working with them for several weeks and we've gotten into real numbers, we're guessing that they're actually spending twice that amount. So wow. it's about sixteen hundred dollars a but month. They're a family of nine people, right? So it's, but still, oh, okay. it's, re it's a reasonable amount, but it can be done better. Okay, so the other, so you've got to be careful if cash is a trigger for you, and it means that you, you know, like you, like say you take out the whole month's worth, <laughs> um, that could be dangerous. So that's why Steve said maybe just take out a week's worth and spend only that amount. The other thing that we tell people for your groceries is whatever budget you set for those groceries, make sure you're not spending all of that because you want to leave a tiny cushion. Why? For when you find those manager markdown specials or clearance items or things, overstock discounts. Like, like the day we found chicken legs for 19 cents a pound. 19, 19 cents a pound. 19 cents a pound. Now, normally, if, if you were spending every bit of your money on a grocery trip, then maybe you'd buy one or two packages of that. But because we stockpile cash in our in our grocery budget, in our account, we knew we could buy 60 pounds of it. And what that did is, and we're going to talk about this later, that locked in that savings for several months. And then we froze the chicken legs here and we did it this for a period of time. So you're all eating less expensive food, and that's kind of an advanced thing, but we're going to talk about that because there's some tools that we can give you that will really, really supercharge your savings. Yeah, that's awesome. I think the, the freezer may be the best grocery saving, saving tool in, in the house, if you don't think about that. Just 
if you can get those chicken legs for 19 cents a pound and you don't want to use them, put them in the freezer and they'll keep a long time. We're yes, gonna, they we're going to give you other Fresh tips. To take advantage. So, yeah, we're going to give you. Sorry. <laughs> we'll give you tips on other things you can freeze that you may not expect. But we've calculated that a freezer can actually save you about two thousand dollars a year. Mm. Even and they cracked out the few. Huh? So, for a big one. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yep. 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 It's it's a huge huge money saver. Yeah. My oh, go ahead. I was just going to say the cutest thing is when our two daughters got married, one of the first things they wanted to purchase with wedding money, each of them, was about a nine cubic foot freezer. Wow. And each one of them thought that was like the most important thing. As a, matter, husbands. as a matter of fact, <laughs> our youngest daughter, when her husband would come over here when they were engaged and dating, he would... He would use our freezer as show and tell for his friends if his friends were over here. He would take them back there and he'd say, look at this. Can you believe this? It was adorable. All this food. <laughs> that is awesome. And, and so I definitely want to get into you with you guys about um, how long food stays in or how long to keep me in the freezer because I definitely don't know how long I can keep my you know the meat in the freezer so I would love to get those tips from you uh, when we get to that section because I think that's really helpful I get nervous about keeping it in there for too long so any tips that you can give would be super helpful and I know I had an I have an aunt who has five kids and when they were growing up she kept an extra freezer and she just kept all of her meat in there and that was a huge um, money saver for her because her kids there were four boys and one girl and the boys could eat yep. yeah that was definitely yeah, yeah. And, uh terry says um here on periscope that they got a deep freezer because of you guys oh, so, yeah. 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 terry says that she has one of your books and she actually bought a deep freezer because of you guys so that is super cool thank you for sharing that terry that is so exciting See, so you guys are Yep, we, we love encouraging people, and, and all we ask is that they send us 10% of their savings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so um, are there different rules of thumb when it comes on saving for produce and meat? Yeah, let's, let's yes. talk about meat first, and then we'll go into produce. Oh, I was going to do it the other way around. We, we, we are we so talk, opposite. We just <laughs> let's give okay. them a break okay. on okay, meat let's for go a few produce. minutes. Let's go with produce. Okay. When you go to the store, look at this. Strawberries are on sale right now. Now, these were 77, 77, cents, 77 cents a pound. Now, that you can buy, um, well, this isn't a good example, but anyway, strawberries, when you buy them, because I'm anal about this, I weigh the packages because they're sold by the unit, not by the weight of the pound. So most of these weighed a pound and a quarter. So I got 25% more just by weighing them. Another thing we do um, is, is we buy... Focus on what's in season. Right. So right now, berries are in season. Grapes are really inexpensive where we're living. Right. So we, we stocked up on grapes. Uh, now, you know, this produce won't last that long. So you have to be careful how you store it. And we're going to talk about storing it in a little bit. But but stock up on what's on season in season and learn how to store it carefully. So, like, well, should we talk about the strawberries, how we store them? We, 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 we use a paper towel. Can you see this on the bottom? We put a paper towel in there, and we actually wash the strawberries – in, um, vinegar. in vinegar and water, about a one cup of vinegar to a gallon of water, and it kills any bacteria. And we also pop off all the greenery. We pop off the greenery because bacteria can get stuck in the in the, the leaves. And so we take that off, and that way these strawberries will last a good good long time. So with produce, Christina, basically what we say is eat what's in season. So in the spring, you're going to find artichokes, asparagus, um, strawberries. Summer is coming. Summer has the best selection of fruits because you're going to have all the melons, right? Cantaloupe, honeydew, watermelon. You're going to have all the other berries, blueberries, blackberries. You're going to have peaches, nectarines, plums, apricots, um, delicious, delicious fruits, cherries. So eat a little bit more of that. We're not saying exclusively eat what's on sale, but this is the time to look up those recipes that would use those kinds of things or make fruit salads oh. that incorporate 
the um, recipes, the, the, the fruit that's on sale. That's one of our most popular pins on Pinterest and one of the most popular pages on our website. We have this fruit, fruit salad, salad recipe. Pins. It's oh, phenomenal. Right. So, right. um, if you know yes. to that one. Yeah, it's delicious. It's called the Magic Disappearing Fruit Salad. <laughs> All right. That's like a grape that. salad that's that's phenomenal too. So, what kind? A grape salad. Oh, so it's, it has become mm. the hottest thing in our team. Our granddaughters ask my wife to make it when they come over. I mean, it's it's out of this world. It's not healthy, but it's out of this world because in addition to grape, <laughs> it has like like cream cheese and brown sugar and I don't know what all. Oh my what goodness! Oh, it's good though. <laughs> that sounds delightful. You can't go wrong. We, we use yogurt and marshmallows. I don't know what it is, but oh. it's delicious. Oh, wow. So these two, both of these recipies have some pretty yummy ingredients. Yeah, it's, it's, still, it's still healthy. Okay, okay so yeah. let's talk about it. Um, meat, if you buy it in the um, butcher section of the, of the grocery store, has a very thin plastic wrap. So if, you, if, it, if it's going to take you more than a month to go through your meat, then just double or triple wrap it in, in plastic wrap when you get home. Um, things like turkeys and corned beef and ham, anything that has a thick plastic wrap on it can, and, is vacuum and is vacuum sealed can store anywhere from a year to two years in a freezer, believe it or not. I saw Christine's eyes get really big. We verified yeah. this. We were talking to a butcher who served in the Navy. And uh, I was asking him if he had any discounted turkeys after Thanksgiving. He said, well, the fresh ones we discount, but the frozen ones we just stick back in the freezer because, you know, there's no expiration date on frozen turkeys. And I said, why not? He said, because they're vacuum sealed and they're frozen in heavy plastic, and they'll last for two years. He said, when we would ship out in the Navy, we'd go out for 18 months. We'd have two years' worth of turkeys for Thanksgiving in the hold, and you could not tell the difference between the ones that were a year and a half old and the ones that were fresh. So wow, I had no idea. Good. Yeah. Okay, the other thing to watch for when you're trying to save on produce and meat is the pre-packaged meals that they put together. <laughs> like like the pot roast meal where they put together beef with onions, carrots and potatoes. Now, that's a great deal. It's really convenient, right? But it's it's like super profitable for the grocery store because they're charging $3.99 a pound for the meat and the potatoes and everything, so it's convenient. But in reality, you're paying like six dollars a pound for the meat because the potatoes and stuff are only like thirty-three or forty cents a pound. Mm. If you were to buy them separately, right, right. So just watch for the con the convenience factor in the grocery store can really, really cost you. But um, once again, it's it's economy of scale. So if you're used to eating out all the time and you want to like work yourself your lifestyle, then by all means, buy the prepackaged pot roast yep, yep. because that's certainly less money and healthier than eating out all the time. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Take it in steps. So I'll tell people, my gosh, don't give me that excuse that you don't know how to cook because if you go to the grocery store today and you walk down the frozen food aisle, they have every kind of meal imaginable yeah. so in, a in a box, bag. <laughs> in a box or in a bag yeah. that literally all you have to do is bring home and heat up. Yeah. yeah. I have to say yeah. I am a sucker for the conveniently packaged meals. I do buy those a lot more frequently than I would like to admit. But I don't know. It's just you grab it all and you go. But it, it is definitely a money saver if I just bought my own potatoes right. and my own especially the Trader Joe's pot roast because you don't get very much for like what you pay for it <laughs> so I know right. I need to, I need to get better at that I will admit that and that's Steve what about uh, particularly meat but meat and produce that are near the expiration date that's printed on them my wife and I have a philosophy about that yeah. so those sure. are big deals we love those deals um, actually, people, we, we say when people ask us about expiration dates, we say they make us laugh. They make us laugh all the way to the bank because our theory is, our theory is that the expiration date is it's a sell-by date. It's not a date that the thing is going to turn green and explode. Yes. You know, it's not that. And, and basically, it's a supply chain issue for the butcher, the um, beef manufacturers or chicken manufacturers. They want to keep 
their food moving into the stores. So they put that date on it. It's not required by the FDA. Every bargain hunter's dream. I'll give you an example. Safeway, two days out from the expiration date, not marks their stuff down 50%. One day out, they mark it down 75%. If you shop in an area where there's a Smart and Final, Smart and Final is kind of a small rest, uh, restaurant supply warehouse. I know they're in California. I don't know if they're in Texas. Right? But uh, Smart and Final marks their stuff down 50%. And it's, it's a bargain, a way to save huge amounts of money. And what we tell people is use your senses. If it looks bad, if it looks green, don't buy it. If it smells bad, if it's got a lot of fluids in it, don't buy it. We had a friend who's a butcher. He's a, actually a very trustworthy guy. He's a scout master for a Boy Scout troop. And he used to be a butcher. And he said in the old days, when the meat would turn green in the case, what they would do is they would trim the green off and they'd put the meat out to sell again. Now, this was 40 or 50 years right. ago. There's nothing wrong with it. And then if it turned green a second time, they'd cut it again. And if it was the third time, they'd cut the green off and they'd put it into the grind, he called it. That was the grind for the ground beef. And they'd resell it. Which and makes you real excited uh, about buying ground beef. beef stuff. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, that's, a, that's exactly where we can, we are. I mean, there's a little around the corner. I think it's at Kroger. There's the, right, the new meat. And there's a little section around the corner that has the sell-by date. Yep. coming down and we always look there first and you can get great cuts of meat and it and we have a daughter who will look at that and go we can't eat it now it's perfectly fine <laughs> we'll put it in the freezer <laughs> it's like you know there's there's the theory is take we've bought milk that was one day out of going out of cone and we take it we pour a little off the top we stick it in the freezer the milk the sell by date still means it's going to be good for a week later so don't hmm. smoke that so meat uh, you know, produce is a little different because that stuff, you can tell it's, it's going bad. So you're going to have to cook it right away or eat it right away. But meat, we freeze. Um, it, it's not a problem. We, la we laugh. Nobody at has it. ever gotten sick at our house. Yeah, Never. Same with us. Never been an issue. And we have next year's turkey already. So, yeah. there you go. You know, and so, dang, if and, I'd known, I would have stocked up after Thanksgiving. Uh -huh. and, now no, we know. No, Christina. And strawberries are really good, especially when they're frozen in ice cream. Yes. Yes. Well, here's, here's the deal. <laughs> strawberries go bad so quickly. So if you buy a lot of strawberries, eat some the first day or so, or second day, and then take the rest of them, cut them in half, lay them on a cookie sheet, freeze them, and then stick them in a bag. You know, frozen fruit, and we're going to talk about this later, but frozen fruit costs 3 to $4 a pound. We bought these strawberries for $0.79 cents a pound. If we freeze them, they'll last for a year, and we've got frozen strawberries for one-third of the price. Wow. Wow. Mind blown, man. I, I, there's so many things now that I have to do when I go grocery shopping. Yep. I, I'm curious, how much time do you spend when you get home from grocery shopping, repackaging and prepping your food um, to help it last longer? Like, yes. how, much, how long do you spend on that? That is a great question. And we want to shoot a YouTube video for our YouTube right. channel about that. The produce takes the most time. Definitely. But now we only shop for produce probably twice a month. Right. So we'll buy 15 apples. Uh, right. You know, 10 avocados. I mean, we, we right. buy a lot of stuff. I mean, if we both do it together, it'll take an hour. It, um, by the time we wash everything and remove trim, trim, trim stems and stuff like, did you know eggplant will last quite twice as long if you cut off the green part at the top of it? Really? Like I if you know. buy an eggplant and like you... You, you know, you know, you're not going to get around to making eggplant, eggplant parmesan till the end of the week to keep the eggplant fresher. You trim right. the top of it. So we've wow. got all kinds of tips and tricks like that. We really need to shoot that video. Yeah, we do. We do. Um, <laughs> Noelle here wants to know if you have a Periscope channel because people are saying that you are enlightening them here on Periscope. So they want to know where they can go to watch your videos and learn more about you because you guys have shared some. Even I'm just like I'm over here writing down tips that I need to take home. Well, you know, we're kind of old, so we don't we haven't done Periscope yet, except with you guys. But we do have a YouTube channel with about ten thousand eight hundred subscribers and two two and a half million views. We've got one hundred and fifty two videos up there. A lot of them about cooking, saving money. Um, we got some grocery tips on there, so they can go over to our YouTube channel. And the videos are all over our website too, yeah. MoneySmartFamily.com. Um, on the money saving tips section. Um, if you just go to that money saving tips page, you'll see an icon for recipes and you click on the recipes and you'll, you know, a lot of the recipes we have videos for. Right. And, and on our 
uh, cut your grocery bill in half page on our site. So if they just go to moneysmartfamily.com slash groceries, uh, that's really the landing page to go to. And we'll talk about the book. And the book has several videos specifically about how to grocery shop smarter. And then uh, there's other tips in there. So that's that's probably the fastest place to get it. Yeah, Noel was also asking, what's your YouTube channel? Is it is it Money Smart Family? If you search for Money Smart Family, it'll come up. We, we weren't very smart in branding ourselves when we started that many years ago. So we're Maven of Saving. But, Maven but, of Saving. Maven of Saving. But Money Smart Family will work. And if they go to MoneySmartFamily.com, we have a link to it on the top of our, our website. Okay. MoneySmartFamily.com. Let's, money. Let's save them some more money. Yes. Okay, so what about, uh, did you guys have anything else you wanted to add about produce and meat before we go on to the next question? Well, there's lots we could say, but I'm worried that we're not going to get to everything. Yeah, so let's keep okay, going. We'll keep okay going. so let's keep going. So what advice do you have about couponing and shopping sales? Well, thanks, thanks to extreme couponing, couponing has changed drastically. Um, most, I, I don't think there's any store out there anymore that's doubling coupons. And it's really taken the fun out of it. I would say, don't even stress about the coupons. Most people don't have time for right. it. Right, there's so many ways to save money on groceries without coupons, you do not need to like keep guilt on yourself. No, I'll, I'll give you just two tips on it. Number one, if you like a product, contact the manufacturer. Oftentimes they will send you a huge coupon. Uh, I got some for a, a spray we use in the shower to kill, kill mold, you know, it's a shower cleaner. And I told them I liked their product, they sent me a $5 coupon. Uh, those wow. are the kind of things you can do. Um, but, and the other thing is if you do have a coupon, like a 50%, 50 cent off coupon, use it on the smallest size item. Don't use it on a big item because your savings percentage is less. So that's that's just one way. And then what, what also for shopping sales, um, know your burn rate. We're gonna call it our burn rate because a stocking up on a sale item does you no good if it goes bad. Like if it goes rancid. Like say you want to stock up on peanut butter, but you can't eat it in a in a year's time. Isn't well, in a in a normal around a normal amount of time before it turns rancid. Cooking oil can go rancid. Shortening can go rancid. There's a lot of things that don't have a long shelf life and you need to know what they are and what your burn rate right. is. So if you bought two of them at half price and one of them went bad, you've still paid full price. Mm. So, so one of so the things like, we do. Right, so here is a here. box of cereal. Okay. And what we do on the top is we write the day the we day buy and it. the month. So that way we keep track easily. Do you see that's right here? It says 117. Yeah. So we we'll bought that in January. And we'll use that before the stuff that we bought in March or April. Mm. It's a smart way to keep rotating through the food. And you know, when the kids were at home, we went through a lot more cereal. And so we one of their jobs when we brought the food home was for them to mark the cereal boxes. And you can do the same thing with canned food. Uh, you can right. do the same thing with um, Well, like jelly was on sale, mm -hmm. this phenomenal store coupon. 32 ounce jar of jelly for 99 cents. Well, jelly will last years on your shelf, two, mm -hmm. two years at least, because it's in a jar, it's exactly. vacuum sealed. Um, so you you know you can take advantage of a stock up price like that. So, yeah. so shopping sales, if you wanna combine coupons with a sale item, that is a good idea too, but let's put coupons aside and just look for those deals when you when you have a buy price like our buy price for for cereal is a dollar fifty or less a dollar fifty a box so so when we see it a closeout and what was this stuff a dollar twenty five yeah but that wasn't a closeout day. that was just a sale right so that's when you buy and you buy enough to last until the next sale and sales cycles are about every two to three months the the manufacturers will push another product and sell it so if you can stock up for that long a time you should be fine. How did you figure out your your the price that you wanted to stick to for cereal? Like I imagine you have that for a couple of items or right. for all of your items. How did you figure out that that is like the max that you want to pay for certain items? Yeah, it's going to be different right. in every area. It, it is going to be different depending on what part of the country you live in. But to me, that's just a game that I've played over the years because inventorying and shopping for the food has been my area of the home management. 
And so I've just become an expert at it. Just like people can become an expert at anything. We have a free price tracker sheet. It's in the book, but it's also on our, on our website, website on the grocery page. And basically this is designed to so take one item that you're interested in. Let's say, say it's peanut butter. And you just watch the ads for a few weeks and you write down the price and the size and you become an expert on that thing. But and you don't have to do it for everything but, you buy. But Steve will laugh at me because I'll open up the food ads for the week and I'll go, oh, there's the buy price. And he'll be like, how do you know that? I don't ask that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you don't ask anymore, but you still wonder, right? Yeah, no, no. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, what? Like when Bravo is, oh, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say when instant oatmeal goes on sale for ninety nine cents a box, I'm like, uh -huh. oh, that's it's time to buy because I know yeah. oh, that's the bottom price for that right. item. Yeah, it's funny because Bravo whiskey here on Periscope says you guys need to go on the Prices Right. You guys would probably kill it. And now you you could win so much on the prices, right? No, we wouldn't. We'd lose. Yeah. Because we don't know retail price. All we know is <laughs> the right. and, and the price is right is not just about food. Yeah, it, okay. yeah, it, yeah it's about but, furniture and clothes, and we don't true. buy retail, like but, Steve said. Yeah, we were we were approached by extreme couponing to go on their show. Oh, okay. And and we turned them down because we aren't extreme couponers. We're extreme mm -hmm. favors. And coupons, you know, it, it, it buys you highly processed, um, non-healthy foods, and we're into lots of fruits and veggies. And uh, and uh, I, I watched. We didn't write this down. Should we share the secret weapon we use to get food really cheap? I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, <laughs> listen, we're just going to share this just with us, okay? Okay. Now everybody knows that Walmart exists, right? Oh, price match. Okay. Now listen. Here's yep. what we do. This is in our book. I don't know if you can see this, but we list every store in our area. Now, we have like nine or ten stores in our area. And every store every week has lost leaders, okay? And so what we do is we write down the lost leaders from each store, and then we go to Walmart. And, you know, Walmart will ad match the, the competitors' brands. Now, in our area, we have two stores that get grade B produce. Now, Walmart doesn't know this, so I hope they don't listen. Well, they will, no, match, stop. They will match with grade A produce, so we'll get five avocados for a dollar. Oh, my we'll goodness. Get, we'll get bananas for 33 cents a pound. Honey, you don't have to whisper. Because <laughs> we can still hear you. That's true. Yeah. So I went to – Annette was feeling sick earlier this week. She, she, she got a cold. And so I went to the store. She gave me the list of all the things we're supposed to buy, and I got seven bags of produce for $26. And these are canvas bags that we filled with produce. Ad match is the fastest way. You go to one store and you get all the savings from all the stores now, around you. Now, we need to say in all fairness for Walmart's sake that people have abused that policy. Yes, yes. And yeah. so you need to have all your ads with you. You need to make sure everything is current. Right. Walmart has tightened their belts on it. They won't ad match eggs and milk. Mm -hmm. Um, anymore. So they're trying. I mean, they don't want to lose their shirts on this. They they want to help people and 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 have right. a, a a good name out there. Right. So right. we're grateful. We're very very grateful for that price match policy mm -hmm. because we can eat lots and lots of fruits and vegetables for a very good price. But I know not everybody is going to go to the time and effort that we right. go to. Yeah. Yeah. Can I just ask really quickly, how do you keep 10 avocados good? Because I feel like I buy them and they're 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 bad after two days. You got to know okay. your burn rate. <laughs> yeah, you got to know your burn rate. And what we do is we buy them, we buy one or two that are ripe and the rest green. And we immediately put them in the refrigerator. Mm, okay. Okay. So the one that's ripe we'll leave out to eat right away. Right. And then the rest will, because if you keep them in the refrigerator, it slows down the ripening process. Okay, okay, good to know. I'm writing that down now. <laughs> I always, I always, my avocados always go bad, and I, it makes me sad because I love avocados. Right, and you just have to have a plan for how to use them. Where did we go to see the avocado? We, we went to an avocado plant when we were on vacation once. That's in um, Fallbrook, California. Okay. They okay, so they gas the avocados to make them ripen faster. You have to know what's going but on. But in with Fallbrook, if you're there, like in May, people have avocado trees all over the place, and they're literally just falling, falling on the ground. <laughs> Can you imagine that? 
That's like here in Arizona during citrus season. You could literally drive around the city and just pick up citrus off the ground from people's trees. It just, it makes me crazy. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. Okay, so going to Fallbrook then. Plan so right, I'm writing down, plan a trip to Fallbrook. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> in May. <laughs> May, that's a specific time. Yes. Yeah, to Fallbrook in May. Definitely gonna hit. It's the Fallbrook. height of the avocado season. Yeah. And that's a All challenge. Right. That's another thing that I think we struggle with. We It's just my wife and I, so just two of us. So when you can buy in bulk and freeze, it makes a lot of sense. But trying to buy just a little bit can be a challenge too because yes. you end up with food that you just can't get rid of. So it's, you're exactly right. It's that burn rate thing. What are we going to eat? When are we going to eat it? It's the plan and mm -hmm. how do we not have waste for things that we can't store longer it's right and we, we're in that same place rod so we're we're actually finding things um we're buying lesser quantities so things like um squash we're gonna have to eat much quicker than broccoli yeah. broccoli will last a little bit longer it's hardier carrots will last longer than that celery will last longer than that when we buy when we buy big packets of packages of chicken we break it down into smaller packages and freeze it in uh, ziploc bags yeah. Wow. All right, man, that is so cool. So many great tips you guys are sharing today. Um, I know earlier we talked about expiration dates and sell by dates. Is there anything else that you wanted to add about people that are looking for these dates um, as they're buying their groceries? All, all I would say on the expiration dates and the sell by dates is know what you can freeze. Like most people don't realize you can freeze milk it will change color. Yep. The milk will look yellow when it's frozen, but it is still perfectly fine. We and had, when you defrost it? Yeah, it turns right back to the regular color of milk. It just looks like it, it looks like it's a different color when it's frozen. <laughs> we had somebody say, oh, I tried that, but you know, it all went bad. It changed color, so I had to throw it all away. <laughs> and well, I how did it turn? It just turned, so they, they, it, if they try it. It turns like yellow when it's not when, bright yellow. It just, no, it's just the, like a, the fat in it. Yeah, yeah something I don't know. Yeah, but so then it changes color. You can also you can freeze cheese. You can freeze mm -hmm. bread. Um, there's so many look, things look, we look, have. Look yeah. at this. Look at this. Blackberry. Blackberries. Yum. How much bread is in our freezer? They're jumbos. We have at least two loaves of bread in our freezer right now. My wife said so. Yeah, yeah. Like have rolls and the other things. Well, let's talk about. Let's, well, wait. Let's talk about freezing. In this book, there's a whole chapter on what things you can freeze um, to put in your freezer. I mean, we could. Yep. It's just crazy. Yeah, we've got a diagramming here. Let's talk about freezers while I'm looking for the diagram. Okay, there's two different kinds of freezers. There's uprights and there's chest freezers. Typically, uprights are frost free. And chest freezers are non-frost free. Yeah, frost free means that they've got a fan going all the time to keep the frost from building up on the sides of the freezer. But what that does, secondarily, is it dries out your food. So even though a lot of people like the upright freezers because they say, quote unquote, it's easier to organize everything, you can see everything and find it easier, because... Um, it also dries out what's in there because of that frost free feature. We prefer a chest freezer. And we actually, Steve did a, I diagram. Did a diagram. Look at this. Look at this. This is how we stock our chest freezer. We use, now we use canvas bags. Back when we in, wrote the well, book, paper, we were using paper bags. Inside a canvas bag. And each bag has different things in it. So it's all organized because uh, you don't want to have to dig through just loose stuff in the, in the freezer. So we'll have one bag with lunch meat in it, one bag with chicken, one bag with frozen veggies, one bag with um, beef, beef. Pork. So it's very orderly and color coded and it works great. So basically you give up some of your space, but it's so super organized. Like there's two levels and there's and they're stacked two bags high. And I'm kind of short. And so we, <laughs> we kind of had to do that because if I had to get to the bottom of the freezer, I could very easily fall into the freezer. Remember Santa, remember Santa in the chimney? <laughs> and so because we have, we have the bottom layer is all in bags, and it's a double paper bag inside a canvas bag, 
I just have to grab the handles of the canvas bag to yank that bottom bag up, and I, the whole freezer is accessible to me, even though I'm height challenged. Oh, nice. So you just have to have a system. You have to have your own yeah. system. Yes. And, and life, life is full of systems. Mm -hmm. And the more systematized you make it, the more you can save. Um, we, we, used to, we freeze cheese, okay? But the problem with freezing cheese, especially if you freeze chunks of it, is that it crumbles when you cut it, when you defrost it. Well, we had a guy write us from Norway, and he said, here's the secret to dealing with frozen cheese. And it's on our website, and I'm not going to tell you, but you have to find Oh, it darn. Out. I was uh, like. That's not <laughs> fair at all. Because it's, there's a way to get yeah, it whisper, to We won't tell anybody. There's a way to get it to reconstitute. It, it works. We tried it. It did it. So we had frozen cheese. We defrosted, and we could slice it, and it didn't crumble. Wow. Okay, so we got to go to moneysmartfamily.com to know what that's. Secret I know. Is. I'm such a fink. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, what is it? Can I ask really quickly, how long does milk stay frozen? Like, how, how long do you keep milk frozen? Oh, forever. Really? Yeah, well, not forever, but um, a long time. As we long used as to, the electricity when lasts. The, when the kids were little and <laughs> we, we would stop once a month, you know, we would load four to six gallons into the freezer um, and it would be fine, you know, a month's time was no problem. I mean, if anything, okay, think about the gallon of milk. It's heavy plastic. The only area that could possibly be exposed to air is right under the cap where the, the top of the milk is. So if anything got freezer burned, it would be that top layer of milk. Everything else would be not exposed to the air. Hmm, interesting, so we do, we, okay. We take a gallon of milk out of the freezer at night, put it in the sink. Remember, it's a, it's a, uh, zero degrees when it's frozen so it well this defrost, is the winter time yeah, it'll defrost overnight you come out there'll still be ice in the middle it'll be at 32 degrees inside so no chance of it going bad and you have milk ready in the morning now or, in the summertime it's a different story because it's so hot here yeah. you literally would pull a gallon out stick it in the sink and two hours later it would be it'd be pretty much it would be thawed enough to get it right. into the refrigerator but you can also put it in the microwave yes you it. can so there's lots of options for defrosting it, but it really is a great time saver and money saver. Wow. Okay. So how does the way, let's go to question six so we can definitely get people more money saving tips. How does the way we store food contribute to weight? So you talked about ways that we can preserve food, but how, how are we um, contributing to waste by the ways that we're storing our food? Well, just like we talked about earlier, when we get our, produce home there's a way to prepare it so that it will last longer when we buy lettuce we don't take the core out we may trim the bottom mm -hmm. and then we wash it and we put it in a ziploc bag with a paper towel um, at least for head lettuce mm -hmm. leaf lettuce you can literally take apart right. um, uh, so there's different ways that you can prepare your produce to help it store better. Washing it, obviously, when you get home from the grocery store, we talked about that earlier, is a yeah. huge saver. Like, okay, like tomatoes, oh my gosh. Like there was a time when I bought tomatoes from the store and I didn't wash them. They were dead in two days. They had, you know, bacteria, bacteria all over them. And that's when I realized how many fingers are touching those tomatoes at the grocery store. So now, I try to pick my produce from the top bin or the very bottom bin, way in the back. <laughs> and I, like I said, I wash it when I get home. And we have been able to make things last so much longer because mm -hmm. of that. Well, let's, let's say you, you overbought bananas. Okay. I mean, they're going brown. Nobody in your house likes mushy bananas. What do you do? You don't want to just throw them away. I mean, you could, mm -hmm. but there's two options. One is put them in the refrigerator. The skin will go black, but it'll slow down the, the decomposition process, okay? That's number one. Then you can use it in a smoothie, mm -hmm. or you can freeze it and get the recipe for Annette's famous Christmas banana bread on our website. And we, she, we have bags of black bananas in the freezer, and, and they'll stay good for a long time, and she makes banana bread out of them. It's under banana mm -hmm. Chocolate chip banana. Oh, yeah, it's bread. got chocolate chips in it, so it's healthy. Oh, it's really good. Oh, cool. yeah, love me light. And here's one. My favorite thing ever, my grandma, here's another personal story my grandma used to make even when I'd come visit, is something called Love Light Chiffon Banana Cake. Ooh. There was nothing light about it. It was like, the uh, it's so good. Do you have it's the rest of your website, Rod? Not, not yet. I'm going <laughs> to put together. Yeah. 
send it to us. We'll put it on ours. <laughs> oh, that good. sounds so good. Oh, my goodness. So okay, many. So talk about uh, the frozen food. Okay, well, we already said that, you know, frozen food costs 3 to $4 a pound. So here's things we freeze. We freeze blueberries. Blueberries are usually at their lowest price right around the 4th of July. So that's when we buy several pounds of them and stick them in big Ziploc bags. Now, there's, there's only two weeks when blueberries are at their lowest price, like Steve said. So you've got to get them then. Don't be fooled by the food ads that say blueberries are on sale throughout the year. Six ounces. Because it's a six-ounce size container. It's a trick, I'm telling you. It's a trick. So <laughs> For sale, not on sale. Different thing. Yeah. yeah. The best price for blueberries is a dry pint, which is usually 12 ounces. And a really good price would be 88 cents for one of those. And okay. that's when you go get a ton of them, wash them, and freeze them. Blueberries are one of the best freezing fruits right. out there. And you can put them in oatmeal. You can put them in smoothies. smoothies you can make muffins. a cobbler out yeah. of them. So there's lots of things to do. Strawberries, blackberries, pineapple. Buy a fresh pineapple, trim it up. You can freeze it. It doesn't fall apart or anything. You can use it in fruit salad afterwards or any other baking. But you also freeze pineapple by laying it on a cookie sheet yes, like do. you do with strawberries. Right. Okay. Here's my favorite. When cherries are 99 cents a pound, you know those big bean cherries, you know they're about an inch in diameter. Oh, those are so Which good. once again, once a year yeah. is the best price for cherries, right. and that's usually late May. Okay. I pit them. And I stick them on a cookie sheet, freeze them, and then stick them in a bag. And I have those on oatmeal and things like that. You can do peaches. Now, there's we, we go to this produce rescue where they, they sell. Oh, gosh, it's so good. And I think they're growing around border areas. Uh, we get 60 pounds of produce for $10. They had jackfruit one day. And jackfruit is the size of a watermelon. It looks like an alligator's skin. It's really, really good. And, and it's super sweet. It tastes like a, a cross between a mango and a pineapple. It was delicious. And we froze that, and it froze great. So lots of options, but freeze that, and then freeze your old bananas. Yeah. Um, I jump in, and some we do some things like tomatoes. Don't freeze well as a whole, but you can use them for soups. You can okay. use them for uh, – we make salsa, and homemade salsa. Yeah. We have fresh tomatoes, fresh peppers, onions, and we'll make salsa and freeze that. Mm -hmm. And that keeps really well. So some things don't freeze well to pull out and use like you would whole, but because they'll break down, but you can still use them for cooking and, and things too. So yeah, yeah. that's a good point. And that'll take tomatoes that are, are past their prime and she'll boil them. I'll blanch them. Blanch and them. Then, and, then, and then pull the skin the skins off and then you make and then I will make spaghetti sauce out of them. Yeah. We have her we have her fourth generation spaghetti sauce recipe on our website and it's a YouTube video. It's one of our most popular YouTube videos. So it's she yes. shares her family Auth secrets. Authentic Italian oh. spaghetti sauce. Abundance. Oh so guys, we're gonna share later where you could um, go to get all these recipes that they keep talking about and all of their secrets. But um, Annette, you mentioned earlier the washing solution that you use for your produce. Can you tell us what that is again? Yes, it's one cup of white vinegar to a gallon of, of warm water, typically. Honestly, we kind of guesstimate it. We glug it in. but it, No, that's about right. Yeah, it's, it's about yeah. right. Basically, it, it kills bacteria. You swish, swish the stuff in there, and it also rinses off dirt. Like when you get strawberries, you wouldn't believe how much sand is on the strawberries. Well, until spinach you, especially. Yeah, you, you see oh the my gosh! Is, is, and the first time, the first time we started washing produce, yeah, the like water. the grapes we had been eating without washing, uh, I looked at the water after we washed the grapes, and I went, "Oh my gosh, we've been eating that." <laughs> It's, it's oh, your minerals. Wow. You're just losing your minerals now. Same, yeah, yeah, yeah. same with parsley. Like I would buy fresh parsley, and then I would wash it, and I'd be like. Oh my gosh, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good to know. Definitely going to have to try that. And now I know you have involved the whole family in your savings. So how did you get your kids to reduce food waste? Well, because, because I kept track of inventory, the kids helped with all the meal prep. Like they would set the table, they would help make the salad, they would chop the vegetable if we were having a cooked vegetable. I would post menus on the refrigerator for you know breakfast, lunch, and dinner, whatever, and they would always know what what was what, what was going on. She'd also control which fruits 
she told them they could eat. So bananas and strawberries would go the first week because we'd only, when the kids were young, we only shopped once a month. Right. So, so they, the so they, so for the longest time, our kids thought bananas were a delicacy. Because, <laughs> isn't that hilarious? Because they only had them the first week of every month. Yeah. Uh -huh. So bananas, grapes, strawberries, you know, those would have to be eaten right away. Right. And then pears and apples and oranges can last easily a month. Okay. So we involved the kids in cleaning the the produce. They, right. some, they didn't come grocery shopping, but they helped us put things away afterwards. Right. Then they helped with meal prep. Right. You know, help making the meals. They also helped set the table. And then we had a really strange rule that most parents don't like if they don't like beets or anything like that. But we had what we called the three bite rule. And this applied to parents and kids because parents have to model what you want the kids to do. So we'd say if you, you know, even you don't like what's being served, you have to have three bites of it. And, and that's what I learned to eat detestable, disgusting red beets. Because I thought uh, they tasted like dirt. I still yeah, think they like dirt. A little they're, bit. They're, they're yeah. sweet food, For right? me, I don't, I'm not a huge beet fan. You know, my dad yeah. loves pickled beets. We, and we he grow them in the garden, and my mom hated to make them, and we always had to eat some. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no. you, know what people, you know what people Maybe. don't realize is that it takes an average of 15 to 25 tries of a new food for you to acquire a taste for it. So when they're trying to introduce their children to food, if their children refuse, they give up after three tries. It takes a lot longer than that to teach a child to like something. We have, you know, citrus trees and our daughter, Abby, our youngest one, our youngest one just did not want to eat grapefruit. And many times we'd have grapefruit for breakfast. So Steve came up with a clever little trick. I'm a trick. <laughs> he took maraschino cherry juice and poured a little bit of it on her grapefruit and then put a cherry in the middle. Well, she oh. started she started eating her grapefruit because it had the cherry and the cherry juice. Mm -hmm. And after mm -hmm. a while, she didn't need the cherry and the cherry juice anymore right. because she had acquired a taste for the grapefruit. Right. Yeah, yeah. I remember when my mom first made Brussels sprouts and she boiled them and I thought they were the most disgusting thing in the world. Uh, they now, are boiled. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but now Brussels sprouts are one of my favorite um, vegetables and, and it's just like them how I like them. So Which I like to roast them. Oh, yes. roast them. Very cool. I yeah. still can't eat Brussels sprouts. I keep <laughs> trying. I try and try and I just can't. I, just, I keep trying. <laughs> I, I like them as long as they're well cooked. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. I find uh, I put lemon on them, olive oil, and then salt and pepper, and then I toss them in the oven. And I think they they come out really good because I think the citrus cuts kind of like the bitterness that that they can have. Ooh, that Very sounds good. wonderful. We need that recipe. Yeah. <laughs> <Under them. laughs> okay. Um. Let's quickly. I want to get to these last two questions. So, what what tips do you have for saving money on eating out? Oh, that's cool. Use a coupon. Yep. Use a coupon, but beware of the restaurants that say, buy one, get one free, but you have to buy two drinks. Because that's where mm. you get them about the same amount. But there's always Not coupons right. out there. There's always coupons. So that's kind of one of our rules. And it just makes it a little bit of a fun challenge. Uh, we used to buy the entertainment book. Mm -hmm. um, we don't look, buy that anymore. No. There's still lots of people. Look Valpac for, sends coupons in the look, mail. Look for early bird specials. There are always coupons arriving in your mailbox for new restaurants opening up in your area. Right. Don't be afraid to go try them. And basically what I would say is try to make eating at a restaurant <laughs> a special occasion. Mm -hmm. Don't make a daily habit. No. You know? um, it's costly and really there is no privacy when you're at a restaurant. And it takes, For your family or your marriage. Yeah. And um, it takes more time to go to a restaurant than it does to make the meal. If you think about the drive time, waiting to be served, eating, waiting for the check, paying, driving home, you can make a decent meal in that time. What we really encourage busy moms to do is to plan a menu and to make use of that ever old friend, the crock pot. Yes. And come up with a lot of crock pot meals that you can set up in the morning and then you can either go to work or you can leave it and take care of the kids and just not worry about it because the, the, the temptation to go out to dinner usually happens at about five o'clock when you come home from work you haven't got anything planned and there's no and plan, you're stressed right? and you're tired and it's just easier to go get pizza so or think about else. dinner the night before is basically what i tell families 
-hmm. And, um, you know, there's boards on Pinterest for crock pot recipes. And I know women that have three crock pots and they'll run a crock pot meal overnight for breakfast. It, and they'll start another one in the morning for dinner. Um, they'll start another one for a dessert. Yeah. And there's, um, there's, they've got these bags now you cook in inside the crock pot, right? So the crock pot doesn't get dirty. But, but the, oh, yeah. I got to give you another teaser. We have a chocolate lava cake recipe that you make in a crock pot. Oh, oh my gosh. It is good. so good. It is, it is good. so good. And there's only three ingredients, chocolate pudding, chocolate cake mix, and chocolate chips. It's, oh, it is to God. die for. <laughs> This is, not a good, this is not a good chat for me. I'm gaining like <laughs> <I know. laughs> Oh my gosh, it's lunchtime. <laughs> it's cheap. good. Oh my okay, god. Okay, well let's go the, let's go the, back the to eating out with Brussels sprouts to get me to eat those. That's what we need. The other, to the other thing we'll tell people is look, if you haven't thought about dinner, don't go don't go to the fast food. Or go, go to, to a restaurant. Or a restaurant. Go to the grocery store, get a rotisserie chicken get. Depending on how large your family is, you may need to go to the bakery, get one or two loaves of French bread, and go get a bagged salad. Mm. That is such a healthy dinner, and it's a fraction of what you would spend at a restaurant. Yeah, I mean, rotisserie chickens sure. typically are six ninety nine for one chicken. You know, I mean, you can see them on sale for four ninety nine. Costco's are the, the best and the largest, uh, but you have to have a membership. Um, but so that meal. Our final, costume, I think, has second largest to Costco. Yes, they do. I have Yes. Yeah, they do. They're very good. Their their flavor is a little peppery for us. But anyway, that you get that you're talking about less than ten dollars. And a rotisserie chicken can feed five or six people. Yeah. So, look at that. That's that's huge. That's only a buck fifty a person. Also keep fixings on hand if you've got kids and they're kind of picky eaters. For a quick dinner is to make sub sandwiches. And so oh, you yeah. have so you have pepperoni, salami, ham turkey, you have provolone cheese, you have cheddar cheese, you have Swiss cheese, you can make ham and Swiss subs, you can make turkey and cheddar subs, you can make Italian with a salami, so, pepperoni, ham, provolone. So easy to put together. The kids, our kids go crazy when we have, like Super Bowl Sunday, we did the sub sandwiches. I'm going to give you one more website to go to. Uh, you can get it through our website, but it's outtoeatwithkids.com. It lists all the restaurants that kids eat free in. Out oh, nice. Okay. Out to eat with kids .com. So if you do want to go out, out to, eat. Go, out to eat with kids. And then, and then the other thing we do is save money on drinks. Just drink water at the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Get the get the food. You don't need the the soda and stuff like that. So our kids uh, never got used to having drinks. Just the water. Yeah. Yeah. I know um, just parents. one uh, <laughs> last quick question that I got here on Periscope. Uh, Lowell was asking, do you have any tips for a single person trying to save on their grocery bill? Because I know, you know, like Rod mentioned, it's harder, like when you have the family planned out, um, you kind of know what you what you want. But when you're trying to transition into it, like a single budget, um, do you have any tips to help people save money there? Yes. And we what, do in our grocery we book, do we actually, actually covered that in the chapter. We do in the, in the grocery group. I, what I would say is don't be shy about like, you could actually cook for one week out of every month and have all your month's worth of cooking done if you're a single person. And package it in because, single serving. Because you could do pork chops. You could put four pork chops in a crock pot, cook them, eat one that night, and and single package the other three. So you're eating those one a week for the next three weeks. I, do you follow? Yeah, yeah. And you, you could do that every day of the week with a different kind of meat, with chicken, with beef, um, with ham. So you're cooking one week out of every month, but you're but you're providing meals for the entire month for yourself. So the same rules apply though. Buy smart, store carefully, cook with a plan, and you'll be able to save. So even if you're single, and honestly, let me show you. I'm just gonna hold it up. That is the chapter in the book. It's more ways that singles and empty nesters can save money because we knew yeah. that was a big issue. So yeah. lots of ways to store, save, and and you know, take your lunch to work. Make make your meal go further by by planning it out and using it for more options. People that have read this book said they have never ever read anything as comprehensive as this grocery book. It will you'll save the price of the book the first week you go grocery shopping. And I think right now it's on sale at Amazon for yes. like six, $6 or, or seven dollars. Nice. 
But if you, of course, if you want a signed copy, you can buy it from us. <laughs> <laughs> moneysmartfamily.com. Hey guys, I'm so sorry. I'm going to have to um, cut the chat down because we have somebody that needs a room. But can you tell, um, Stephen and Nick, can you tell our audience where they can learn more about you? I know we've said it a few times, but I want to make sure that the new people in here uh, get it. We'll say it together. Moneysmartfamily.com. And if you go there, you'll find our YouTube channel, our Pinterest page, Twitter, Facebook. We're all over Facebook. We have a Facebook page. And page. Yep. So, yep. okay. Do you we want to share where you're going to be in these next couple of weeks? Yeah, I'm on the road quite a lot. I'm at the Institute for Financial Literacy Conference this this week in Chicago, uh, the annual conference on financial education. I'll be in Washington next week for the Jumpstart Partner Meeting, Jumpstart for uh, Financial Literacy, Jumpstart Coalition for Financial Literacy, uh, and then several other places coming up. So. Uh, still going to try to be on the credit chat. Still going to try to be on Periscope. Um, tomorrow I won't be able to because I'm speaking at that time. Uh, so they booked me at the wrong time tomorrow. But um, otherwise, I plan to be around and be jumping in and, and still plan to be available. Uh, so thanks for, for hosting, Christina. And uh, Stephen, and thanks for joining again. Always fun, yeah. always insightful. Yep. Thank you so time. much, guys. I'm so sorry to have to cut it short, but I really appreciate all of the tips that you guys shared. You are amazing. Thank you so much. It was awesome being here. It was. A lot of fun, Christina. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.